Here's where things start to get exciting. We have data in a database, and you've built up all of this knowledge about PHP, and you know how to work with data in a lot of ways. We haven't connected with a database yet, but you've worked with CSV files, you've worked with arrays, and all of the concepts that apply to that type of data also apply to databases, but you get some extra benefits too. In fact, it can make some things a lot simpler than before. But before we can use this data, we have to connect to the database in our PHP script. So that's what our next step is. Let's go to our resource pack directory, and in the fourth folder, it's called MySQL Databases and PHP My Admin, we're going to open up the first step here, which is called test.php, connect to MySQL, and query. Also, if you don't have it open already, let's open the test.php file from our examples folder. So we'll hop over there and open up test.php. Let's copy over the code from our step file and paste it over the code that's in the test.php file and save it. Now, if you're using Acquia Dev Desktop, then these settings should work just fine for your installation. However, if you went some other route, then the username and password information for this MySQL user might not be in line with what's in your installation. Now, we'll get to more of that in a moment, but I just wanted to explain why this might not work immediately on your machine. Since we've copied over the code in test.php, let's demo what happens here. I'm going to go back to the browser, and I'm going to go to test.php and hit enter. And what I'm seeing here is each record in the database displaying information about the rows and about each of the column names and the data associated with each of the names. Here's George, here's Sally, and here's Deepak. Now let's look at the code that makes this happen. So I'm going back to my editor, and the first thing we're doing is using a function called MySQL Connect. Now for most of the videos on Build a Module, we use MySQL, and the majority of Drupal sites out there also run on MySQL. And so the reason that we have this MySQL prefix on this function is because there's other databases for which there are these same functions when we're trying to connect to them with PHP. MySQL Connect is a PHP native function. It comes bundled with PHP, just like some of these other MySQL functions that we see here. Now, just as a quick heads up, Drupal puts another layer on top of these functions, so you won't actually use them directly when you're working with Drupal but it's important to have an idea about what's going on behind the scenes, and occasionally there may be an instance where you want to run a query directly. Okay, so MySQL Connect is the function that we use to tell PHP that we want to start using MySQL. We can only use one database at a time, so we specify the database, and MySQL also has a set of users. And when we connect, we have to specify what user account we're going to be accessing with. Now, you didn't need to set up any users for MySQL because Acquia Dev Desktop did that for you. But oftentimes, if you're working with a live site, you'll want different users that have different kinds of permissions. For example, you might want some users that can read data but can't put anything into the database or delete anything from the database. But for now, we're going to keep this simple. When Acquia Dev Desktop installs, it installs a user with the username Drupal user and a password that's empty. This runs on the server localhost, and that's the name of your web server where your MySQL database is on. And then our database name is my database. And you can see here with MySQL Connect that it takes three parameters. The first is the server name, the second is the username, and the third is the password. It doesn't take the database name. We actually use a separate function called MySQL Select DB in order to do that. And you see here we're using the database variable, which is my database. The MySQL connect function will return either true or false. If it's false, it means that we didn't connect successfully, and that can be because the server name is off, because the username isn't valid, or because maybe our server hasn't been turned on yet. If it returns false, then we probably want to know a little bit more about why it didn't work. So we have a little bit of code here to display that error. We check to see if connection is false by using this negation operator, and this should be something that you're familiar with from previous videos. And if it is false, then we're going to use this die function. Die will actually stop our PHP script from running right here, which we want to do here because everything we do from this point on depends on our database. And we can pass a parameter to die, which is some text to display, basically a shortcut for a print or echo statement. 
And what we're saying is you're not able to connect your database because, and then we use a function called MySQL error, which returns the text of the error that happens. And you see, we just wrap this in strong tags just to make it easier to read. So if, for example, we put a couple of random characters in our server name here and we save this and we jump back to the browser and refreshed, you'd see that we have an error. It says warning, MySQL connect, unknown MySQL server host local in, and then gives us a line number, which will help us in troubleshooting. And it says we weren't able to connect your database because unknown MySQL server on host local So our error actually displayed a couple of times, which is nice. But on certain server configurations, we're not going to get this original error, and we have to display it explicitly later. All right, I'm going back to the editor, and I'm going to undo our garble. I'm going to save it, and let's keep looking down the page. 